there! Brittany here, and welcome to Sparkle Kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make the first step in making kombucha. And that first step requires a SCOBY. So I'm going to show you how to make a SCOBY. And if you're wondering what a SCOBY is, well, a SCOBY is actually a living organism. It's this jellyfish, glob-like thing that looks kind of nasty, to be honest but it does mir miraculous work. It's really cool. It's made up of bacteria and yeast, and it's the way you get really amazing probiotics into the it ferments, and that's how you get the healthy gut bacteria that you need, and that's how it makes that fizziness and makes it very similar to soda. So I love drinking kombucha over, like as a soda alternative. So wonderful. All right, so let's make the SCOBY. What do you need? Well, you need a glass jar and you want to make sure this glass jar has been thoroughly cleaned and thoroughly dried. I just use like, some warm soapy water. I like Dr. Bronner's. It works really well. And then make sure it's dried absolutely completely. And then you need a little piece of cheesecloth, a rubber band, and also some kombucha that's already brewed, some store-bought kombucha. I really like this GT's brand. It's fantastic, it's organic, and I, I just really trust this company. Um, but you can, you can use any, honestly. They all work pretty well. You just wanna make sure it's a plain flavored because if you get a flavored type of kombucha, then your SCOBY is gonna be flavored. So let's say you went out and bought mango kombucha because it's amazing. Well, you pour that in there and then your scoby's going to taste like mango, but what if you don't always want mango kombucha? Well, then you got a problem because you know you're going to want watermelon and pineapple and all of these other fun fruity flavors. So, trust me, just go and get the original version. And that's all you have to do. So, in order to make it, it's really simple. You can actually see at the bottom of the jar in this kombucha, there are little slimy, like string-like things, and those are tiny, tiny baby scobies. And you're gonna make a big mama scoby. So all you do, I'm gonna open this for the first time and hope it doesn't fizz over. Woo, fizzy. Okay. And then, so it's gonna float up at the top. Sometimes I like to shake it around a little bit to get the scobies like moving and you want to pour it into the jar and it usually takes about half and you just want to make sure that the baby scobies are getting into this jar let's see I think I see them I think they're there we're gonna add a little bit more oh I see some I see some more okay it doesn't matter how much you add you can add the entire jar which is what I'm gonna do to make sure all the baby scobies get in there and you take that and then you put some cheesecloth over it, secure it with your rubber band, just like this. Make sure it's kind of nice and tight. And it doesn't have to be cheesecloth, it can actually be an old t-shirt, you know, an, an old piece of cotton that you have, or even a paper towel. You just want to make sure it's breathable because this is actually going to be living and you want to make sure that the air is circulating so it's getting oxygen and it's feeding it. And then you just take your jar and you put it in a place that has no sunlight. Absolutely no sunlight. The SCOBY likes it dark. So you will put this maybe in a pantry, in a closet somewhere. You want to make sure once you put it on a shelf that there's enough area above that the air can circulate through. So leave it there for two weeks, check it during the middle of the week and you should have the SCOBY forming on top. And I'll show you what a SCOBY looks like in the next video. So check back in with me and I will show you the rest of the steps for making kombucha. If you have any questions, please leave any comments, um, questions, shoot them to me, leave them in the, in the comment section. And if you like this video, please remember to subscribe. All right, I'll see you next time. Enjoy.